If you're aspiring to be a learning technologist or have just started your career as a learning technologist, then having an understanding of learning design will help you have really valuable conversations with the educators that you're working with. Now I started my career from a very technical angle and I've built up my understanding of pedagogy over a number of years and I found it a really valuable way of being able to engage with educators. At a basic level, learning design is about creating activities that enable students to meet learning outcomes. Different pedagogies and design frameworks provide different ways to consider what these activities might be and how they can be used to help inform the use of learning technologies as appropriate. Now, the recent trend, I think we can say, in online and distance and, and blended education is to use the ABC design framework. There are other models out there like CARP ADM um, as another design method for, for creating um, online and, and digital enhanced learning experiences. ABC is, is certainly one that's um, worth looking at in terms of being able to understand how technologies and different forms of activity work together. The cards that are used in that design framework are really useful to, to convey that understanding. That's underpinned by a pedagogical framework called the Conversational Framework from Diana Laurelard. However, I like to go all the way back to an early model or just an early idea that was presented by Michael G. Moore in 1989 in an editorial which suggested that looking at interactions between learners, educators and content is one way to think about design for distance learning. In 1998, Garrison and Anderson developed their modes of interaction in distance education, which linked these together and even included student to student interactions, educator to educator interactions and content to content interactions, which sounds like a precursor to adaptive content, in fact. Their main point, however, was about how for learning to be effective, they posited that uh, one of those interactions needs to be very strong. So if you have a deficiency in one of those types of interactions, you need to make sure that at least one of them is very strong. As an example, then, we can look at one of more modern examples, maybe MOOCs, massive open online courses where you might have several hundred or maybe thousands of learners on a course. And there might be no facilitation whatsoever, no educator input whatsoever in terms of live discussion. In those situations, then, our educator and student interaction is at a minimal level. But we've designed it so that we've got student to student interaction instead. The activities are all about students learning from each other and the technology is there to provide those that support to enable students to learn from each other. In a blended environment where you're looking at a mix of face to face and online learning, well, the interactions in those two spaces may vary. And again, you can look at how there might be value in face-to-face -face interactions between the educator and students or students and students, maybe for looking at discussion of a theory to try and unpick ideas versus what might be more advantageous in the online environment. Where can you use interactions online? Might they be more asynchronous? If they're synchronous, what are the limitations? So we know that there are limitations of using Teams or Zoom to conduct online classes versus face-to-face. But there are also many advantages. So if we think about content creation, let's say there's an output that's being created for a learning activity, a poster or uh, some sort of summary that students are working on together. That might be more advantageous to do on the online space because the interactions between the students could be asynchronous, bringing in different ideas, different resources and allowing time for that to happen. And of course, with many more resources being digitally available, actually that's more the, the, the best space for it because you're not then having to bring things up on a computer screen, print things out in order to plan something together. So you can operate in the digital environment completely um, when you're preparing that digital asset. So there might be different outputs that might lend themselves to different forms of uh, space, whether that's face-to-face -face or online. So we're looking at interactions though, those interactions between students and how activity enable students to interact with each other, students and educators, and students and content. In terms of content interaction, at a basic level, you can have an interactive video that embeds quizzes at certain points in the video, or technology that enables the adaptive release of content, maybe based on some sort of formative assessment. There might also be personalised learning pathways. The question then is, then what benefits are those types of interactions to enabling students to meet learning outcomes? So why do we use personalised learning 
uh, pathways? Why do we use adaptive content so that a student can meet a particular outcome? And it's that question about why thinking of the activity, how you're creating that activity, why you're creating that activity and why you're using certain types of interactions over others in order to help meet a learning outcome. So thinking about the use of educational technology, you can think about how it fosters different forms of learner, educator and content interactions. And through discussing these with an educator you're working with to create a, a learning experience using educational technologies, you can then have that discussion about where they want to prioritise the activity, what type of experience they want to prioritise through that activity. So having an understanding then, a very, very basic understanding of learning design, thinking about the role that educational technology can play as part of that design will help you work with educators and discuss what they're trying to achieve with their students.